Timothy. Chris. I'm Esther. We're going to teach you the proper techniques of using a blood glucose monitor. And also we're going to talk about the correct, well, ideal values you want to have when using the meter and how to keep a logbook. Yeah. And also some troubleshooting. Um, so some of our target audiences yeah, include sure. anyone that wants to measure their blood glucose uh, levels at um, home. And also future pharmacists or pharmacist students. And just anybody who wants to measure their blood glucose levels. Okay, enjoy! These are the materials we need. Lancet. Lancet device. Test strips. And the monitor. And it's good to have alcohol wipes or cotton balls to clean your finger. Step one, wash your hands with soap and water before pricking your finger. Residue from the lotion may affect the test. If you're somewhere without a sink, make sure you bring rubbing alcohol to clean your fingers. Dry your hands, and afterwards, warm your hands to increase blood circulation. This will help get enough blood for the glucose meter. Step two, warm your hands to increase blood circulation. This will help get enough blood for the meter. The test strip is where you will apply the drop of blood. The top part, where you can see the yellow edge, is where the blood will be applied. It will drain into the reaction cell in the meter. The other end, the black end of the test strip, is inserted into the device. Push the test strip in until it is firm. Step 3. Load the lancet device. Take off the top of the lancet device and grab a one-time use lancet by twisting off the cap. These are single use lancets, remember. Never reuse or share with another person. Insert the lancet into the device as seen. Close the top. And you can twist the top of the lancet device to adjust the depth of the needle. Pull the trigger on the device back. Choose a spot on the side of, the, of your fingertip and poke it with the lancet device by pressing the bottom above the number. Wait for a drop of blood to form. Place the drop of blood on or near the testing area. Wait until the right amount of blood has been drawn into the test strip. Your blood sugar levels will appear in about five seconds after applying the drop of blood. Step four, use a cotton ball or tissue, or in this case, paper towel, to clean your fingertip. Keep it there until the bleeding has stopped. Throw away the lancet in a hard container with a lid. Keep the container out of reach of children and pets. So in terms of how often you should test your blood sugar, it mainly depends on what your doctor suggests. For type one diabetes, the general principle is three or more times a day if you have type 1 diabetes. And testing could be done before and after meals. And generally by after meals, we mean two hours after you have eaten. And for type 2 diabetes, you generally it's recommended you take blood, you have your blood sugar tested more than one time a day. And this depends if you're taking insulin doses or not. Uh, typically, it's the same thing as type 1 diabetes. You test before meals, after meals, and so forth. And if you're managing your type 2 diabetes with non-insulin medications or with diet and exercise alone, you may not have to take your blood sugar daily. So when you take when you measure your blood sugar levels, you want to record them in a log book. Now there are different types of log books, but the general log the general one we'll be talking about is the one touch log book. And this log book has a number of columns 
one for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it has space for before meals, so when you're fasting, meaning you haven't eaten for a while, and after you have just eaten, so two hours once again after you have eaten. And also, the great thing about this logbook, it has a column for the amount of carbohydrates or insulin you've taken that day, so it could sort of serve as a justification for why your sh sugar levels might have been extra high or extra low at that moment. And also, lastly, has a column for when you take your blood sugar before you sleep. So in terms of how do you interpret your sugar levels results, uh, we provided a little chart for you here. For fasting values, typically if you go below 70 milligrams uh, DL, that tends to mean you're hypoglycemic and you will need uh, blood sugar in your, in your body right away. Normal values for fasting is 70 to 100. Uh, if you're over 126, you basically have a chance of diabetes or your blood sugar is basically too high. And if you're a diabetic, your goal range is between 70 to 130, though recent values suggest maybe though recent standards have shifted towards 140. Uh, for casual uh, diabetes values, meaning you just eat or you're not entirely sure you, you just ate, normal values is below 140, and diabetic levels are above 200, and the goal for this will be less than 180. If you have low blood sugar, meaning you have less than 70 milligrams per DL, what you want to do is follow the rule of 15. Now, the rule of 15 is basically you eat 15 grams of carbohydrates, so this could be a 15, gr mil a 15 gram a glucose tablet, or maybe a small amount of orange juice. And basically, you eat it or drink it, and you wait 15 minutes, and then you check your blood glucose levels. And if they're still very low, you basically repeat the process again and eat another 15 grams. Meet Sophia and Esther. Two first-year pharmacy students doing what they do best, eating chocolate. And now, they are worried about their blood sugar levels and want to measure it. But they cannot. You should wait around uh, two hours before taking your blood glucose levels after a meal or a chocolate binge. Also, they might be diabetic. It is important to use enough blood. If there's not enough blood on the test strip, the meter may not read the blood glucose level accurately. Before you prick your fingers, make sure you rub your hands together. Hang your hand down below the waist. Prick your fingers and squeeze. Is the pricking too painful? Use sides of fingertips instead of fingertip pad. Make sure to dispose the lances properly. You can buy sharps containers at drugstores or you can use a vitamin bottle or any thick plastic bottles. If you don't dispose them properly, people might get injured. Make sure to properly dispose the lancets. It's not a good idea to throw lancets in the trash. Lancets can penetrate the trash bag and hurt someone. You can buy sharp containers at drugstores or you can use a vitamin bottle or any thick plastic bottle. When not properly disposed, people might get injured. Ow! Chocolate!